Just yesterday, Bengals quarterback coach Dan Pitcher was named as a potential Patriots offensive coordinator hire, but today the Bengals have announced they've hired Pitcher for that same title. Another name off the board as the Pats continue their search. So it seems uh, now to be down to Nick Caley and Zach Robinson, both on the Rams staff. Robinson is the current quarterback coach and pass game coordinator and has spent five seasons with Sean McVay, while Caley was once on the Pats staff and currently serves as the Rams Tight end coach, Andrew Callahan back here on set. Your thought on the state of the Patriots offensive coordinator search? Quiet, a little bit too <laughs> quiet uh, and not in a good way. Not like they're going to hire everyone tomorrow and we'll have news and new content in that this is offensively, I think, a little bit of a problem. And I want to credit Jeff Howe who came on my podcast yesterday and said he's spoken with some of the top OC candidates on the market who say that Patriots job is not great. And so when you're down to two candidates, one of whom has spent eight of his nine years in New England as far as coaching in the NFL, and Nick Cayley, and the other guy who's only been in the league five years as an NFL head coach, I think that says it all. Now, the, the search has only officially been open for four or five days here, so this is the last one that Mayo moved on, and I would just keep one name in mind, and that is Josh McDaniels. Okay. Well, what? So this is what I feared, and this is – I thought they'd have a hard time getting people here, especially out from under McVeigh or one of those programs. What – if, if, if the Cincinnati Bengals coordinators, who don't even call plays, are getting head coaching jobs, which the last guy just did, why would Pitcher turn that – why would he do that to start all over with the rookie quarterback and what you guys say is the worst, third worst roster in the NFL for a rookie head coach who's coaching linebackers for the last four years and you're sort of setting yourself up to fail? They're going to have a hard time. If McVay's a pipeline and Shanahan's a pipeline and Cincinnati's becoming a pipeline – those guys aren't going to leave those programs but, but, to come here. A pipeline to what? Head coaching. Okay. Uh, well, I, but I don't know if it's been a pipeline to head coaching. It's a pipeline to a – look, this is why I would leave. It's a pipeline to making yourself available for jobs like this, to being an offensive coordinator for a, a franchise where you can actually call plays. Like Sean McVay, yeah, you, you, you're on the Sean McVay staff, but if you just, you're going to be an assistant there for five years. He's been there for five years. Okay, but we talked about this. Okay, he's, they, they, nobody's okay. calling him for head no, coach interviews. We mentioned this last night, Andrew. Mike McDaniel and now the Callahan. Again, is it Callahan from Cincinnati yeah, to Tennessee? Right. Yeah. yeah. Both those guys just got head coaching jobs without being play callers. So if that's the ultimate goal is to be a head coach and you can do it by not even being a play caller, by just being under the bosom, the teat of Sean McVay yes. and Shannon and McVay these guys. McVay does not have teats. That is a fit, strong I, man. Yeah. I would stay right under that teat. teat. <laughs> stay right there. Heck, yeah. You know what I mean? I, here's the thing. The, I, the play calling thing I think is completely overrated because when you're a head coach, you are the principal. You're not a teacher. You're not organizing, you know, school plans or game plans or lesson plans. You are in charge of the whole building. So you're not involved in the minutia. And you can get those jobs done as an offensive coordinator, as we just saw with Brian Callahan and Mike McDaniel and all these guys, by not calling plays. I mean, Sean McVay was a tight ends coach and then turned offensive coordinator for one year when he goes to the Rams and is now a top five coach in the whole league. So I think for the Patriots, they're having a hard time getting the big fish. Now, maybe they shouldn't have interviewed Shane Waldron, who left for Chicago the day after he supposedly interviewed with the Patriots, and now Dan Pitcher, who is playing the market, doing his agent a solid, getting his name out okay. there. But then if, you're, if you know you're not going to hire them because they're not going to come here, it tells me that Mayo is either comfortable with something in his back pocket, McDaniels I already mentioned, or he's there, what I think he's doing on defense, is picking their brains to learn a little bit more about those systems. So well, he'll get you, someone else you wish to run the system for him. You wish this is true. Yeah, but Why? Because the alternative is that they're flailing around. And that, that could be it. Or but it. all of these guys are McVay guys in some form or fashion. Like, Pitcher you're, you're, is the you're, only you're one. You're going to wind up with the McVay guy, but it may not be the, the number one McVay guy. On right. Your board. And at least in the process, Gerard gets to go, teach me about this. Like, you're going to come in because I'm going to ask you for an interview. It'll be a two-hour Zoom, but I understand this a little bit better at the end of that Zoom than I did before if I just took one McVay guy. Let me talk to all of them. Let me get all your ideas and angles and so, inputs. Okay. But, but so, we, but if that's the case. So, them striking out on these offensive coordinators is part of the grand plan. Got it. Chess checkers. Got it. It's but, not chess checkers. It's just saying, look, let's talk about defense for a second, and this will come back around. Bill last year on the offensive search said, I'm going to pick all these brains. I'm going to interview these guys to potentially be position coaches because I know it's going to be Bill O'Brien. I'll interview him last, gain all that intel. In the meantime, they bring aboard Adrian Clem. That was it. I think Mayo doing that on did. defense. It's not why he did that. But the point is – there's a dual, perhaps triple purpose here going on. I'm not saying this master plan is going to work. I'm not saying Mayo even knows who he's going to hire. But in the meantime, he's going to make this process work for him. And that, I think, is what's going on here. Is there, is there a possibility? Like, we, we're talking about, hey, these guys don't want to come here. 
maybe the Patriots have not made the job attractive enough. It's not but, attractive. So, yeah. but okay, but let's say it's not attractive because you don't have a quarterback, or your quarterback is Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi, and you got the number three pick. But something else can make a job attractive. I can tell you what it is. Uh, I haven't worked in a number of places. Money! Okay? <laughs> so if you are going to pay your offensive coordinator, what, how, do we know how much they're offering the offensive coordinator money? Do we know if they're giving these guys a say in who they draft at number three if it's going to be a quarterback? Are they doing any of those things? Are they making – or are they telling these coaches, hey, if you come here, like Bill, like Bill Belichick told Bill O'Brien last year, oh, I'll give you a higher one. You can only hire one coach. Everybody else says, uh, so the coaches have to stay. The certain things have to be in place. So we keep saying, hey, these guys don't want to come here because the job sucks. Maybe they don't want to come here because it hasn't been made more attractive. Well, and that's part of the pitch, right, is, is the money, the salary. You're never going to leave an interview without talking salary. And that's also partly why, and you're going to love this, why I think McDaniels is a bigger player in this. Because he's been paid by Vegas. His contract would have run for another three oh, and a half years. here we years. go. That's a guy who comes in <laughs> and would be cheaper. I'm not saying that's the case, but I don't know Mayo's budget. All I know is that half of their candidates who have interviewed already have other jobs. Okay. So you're, you're serious. You think this is McDaniels again and they're going to keep that offense? I think when I look at McDaniels, and I, I think, look, I think Mayo's going to want to evolve the offense. I don't think it's an accident. All of these are McVay guys who have interviewed. But I think when I look at McDaniels, and Nick Cayley and Zach Robinson, I don't know how you don't consider McDaniels a favorite based on his experience, which is more than the other two combined, by the way. The fact he's developed young quarterbacks and he's been here and he wants to be here. Okay, they're not, but they're not moving the offense. They're not evolving the offense. They're stuck in the last 20 years. I well, thought the well, whole idea say, hey, was Josh, good. you can't go to Atlanta because Bill's not going to be there. You only have to come here, and this is how I want to run things. Work with Nick Cayley, who will tell you all the McVay secrets because he's been there for a year. We'll bring him back, give him a promotion. Oh. You need to change it. Ooh. Look, this is – So, oh, wait a minute. We're going to have Josh good. McDaniels run the McVay offense instead of McVay guy running I'm not the saying – <laughs> We're getting really far into speculation here. <laughs> but like it's, it's it. worth bringing like up because I think McVeigh, or excuse me, McVeigh, too much chance. <laughs> Mayo wants to advance this in a way, modernize it. We've been talking about this for months, okay? Still when Belichick was still here, we had a half a season to go. Yeah. The offense has to be the biggest part of that. Players know it. Assistants know it. How do you move this forward? Well, you just don't install an entirely new offense with guys you don't even know because who does Gerard Mayo know in the McVeigh tree? No one except for the guys you just talked to this week. Oh, and Nick Cayley, who's really more of a Belichick guy. So that's how I think they're going to try to split the difference. 